Well, uh, Hero Grown Foundation. Yes. How'd you start it? When did it start? What's uh, Give me the 411. Well, I, actually, I actually started giving uh, free cannabis to veterans in 2010 when I lived in Lake Tahoe uh, after cannabis saved my life. And then uh, I really, uh, Hero Grown was born uh, early 2014. So it's a, a, a charity that gathers cannabis and gathers uh, and, and goodwill for veterans and first responders. That's the... Absolutely. And, and uh, we have cultivators that donate uh, product to us. We have uh, CBD manufacturers who donate product to us also. So and, uh, growers literally gift you cannabis product, whether it's flour or oil or anything that's going to have a therapeutic value for a veteran? Absolutely. And sometimes it even comes through dispensaries, you know, where they do uh, in most states, uh, they can do that for a penny. Uh, you know, and transfer it just because to so satisfy the tax, uh, the tax man. So that's awesome. So the vet, vet your personal experiences with as a veteran. So and, and with uh, issues that were caused by your work. Sure. So sure. is that what caused you to get into it? No, really. What uh, the the genesis for Hero Grown was uh, in 2013. I was training my German Shepherd, who was a young pup at the time, and I I rented all these young vets who were telling me they were taking 20 or 25 different prescription meds a day and that cannabis was the only thing that ever helped them with PTSD, pain, uh, depression, anxiety. But if they wanted to buy their kid a new backpack to start school next week, uh, they couldn't afford to buy the cannabis. So one morning, uh, shortly after that, I woke up and just decided that's just outrageous that the only reason they're taking these pills to kill over 50 vets a day now is because they were free. How much? How big of a problem is uh, opiate addiction with with vets? It's horrendous. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a, it's it's getting a little bit better in terms of of the prescribing of it, but uh, you know, it's just pretty much just always the standard answer. It, not it, just not just opiates, but a, a wide variety of pharmaceuticals. And it's widely understood now that cannabis therapies are a way to an alternative way to get off of opiates. Is that? Absolutely. You know, I, I really believe that's the case. You know, when I talk to providers at the VA now, uh, you know, the providers at that level are much more receptive to uh, to having their patients use cannabis. You know, the, the bureaucrats are the ones that are that are holding it up because the politicians, of course, you know, pull the strings there. So, uh, you know, that's what we really have to get to. You know, the driving force behind this simply is money. You know, big pharma gives, you know, millions of do billions of dollars to uh, you know, to politicians, and then that kind of trickles downhill when they're appointing someone to be the head of the VA hospital or whatever. Uh, and so the bureaucrats are still pretty stubborn when it comes to cannabis. So Hero Grown Foundation operates in how many states? Well, we operate nationally now. We, uh, you know, only give away free cannabis in states where it's legal to do that, obviously. Uh, but we ship free CBD products to veterans and first responders in all 50 states now. About forty thousand, forty to $60,000 a month. Uh, in CBD products, and we've given away over four million dollars in uh, in actual cannabis products in the last five years. That's awesome. So each state uh, has different regulations about uh, cannabis and cannabis products. So how do you function? Like, in, how would you function in Maryland, or how would you function in New Jersey? Well, in, in back east, uh, primarily the way we function are through veterans who are members of our organization, um, and it's kind of like an underground railroad <laughs> deal, if you will. Um, you know, and they take care of other veterans. They take, you know, we facilitate with our contacts the donations. And again, it's not always a, you know, a licensed cultivator. Sometimes it's a private grower or whatever. Um, we test everything before we give it out. But in, in a lot of those eastern states still, you know, we don't do public giveaway events. Uh, you know, we have veterans helping other veterans. So there's two ends of the pipeline. You've got logistics at the one end where you have producers that are, are getting uh, different products into your hands to be distributed to veterans in a particular location. And then the other end of the funnel is your network of uh, veterans that are connected to the uh, neighborhood that they're in, the locality that they reside in, and they're bringing the, the relief to the relief that you find, people can also make cash donations, I'm sure, at a website. Absolutely, yeah. Just at, at herogrown.org, O-R-G, um, they can make donations. Uh, and, you know, that, that helps a great deal, especially with, with Hero Grown Airdrop, 
which is our national program where we ship, as I said, free CBD products to vets and first responders in all 50 states. And so, it's very expensive to so do So you bring that, up so. first responders. In New York, around uh, the, the 9-11 attacks, the, the, this first responder trauma was such a elevated thing that people had an understanding of. You changed the name of the foundation from Grow for Vets to Hero Grown to include first responders. Can you talk about that and what the impact's been? Sure. Well, you know, in addition to being an Army veteran, I also had a, a background in law enforcement. Uh, and and it, it wasn't the, the shootings that we had in Las Vegas, okay, uh, October of uh, 2017, uh, it wasn't really the driving force. I'd already decided that we'd include uh, include first responders, but that certainly accelerated, uh, you know, the process. And consequently, on January 1st of 2018, we transitioned or evolved from Grow for Vets USA to Hero Grown and started helping first responders. We'd helped a lot of first responders prior to that, but we really didn't make a big deal out of it or, or publicize the fact that we were doing that. You know, but I've been helping first responders in Lake Tahoe since 2010. So uh, when I lived there, so you know, in, in a lot of a lot of jurisdictions now, for example, you know, one of the the, the people that we persons that we help in Lake Tahoe uh, is an EMT, and you know, his chief is fine with him using cannabis. You know, but if he does use his cannabis like the night before, he tells his chief or his captain, I mean, and then he he just doesn't drive the, the you know the rig that day. Um, but other than that, I mean, you know, they understand these guys get a lot of injuries, a lot of physical injuries. Uh, but again, like you mentioned, you know, in New York or shootings here in Vegas, uh, you know, I mean, it's just the the trauma those guys went through is horrendous. And it's not just the first responders. I mean, the people that were you know affected, thousands of civilians. Post-traumatic stress, only 30% of the people in the United States who have post-traumatic stress are veterans. Uh, so, you know, you can have PTSD, uh, you know, if you've been involved in any traumatic situation in your life. Really appreciate what you do. Uh, appreciate you sitting down and talking to us today. And uh, support Hero Grown Foundation at herogrown.org. I appreciate it, and I really appreciate Bovida as well. You know, Bovida was our first long-term, or our longest sponsor, uh, you know, going back, you know, pretty much to the beginning. Uh, you know, we couldn't do what we do without your help, and I appreciate uh, you, certainly, and, and the whole Bovida team. So, thank you. Well, we you. appreciate you. Thanks, Roger. I mean, this is, this is, a, this is a conversation about uh, where you get into the gray area on uh, all the legalities and all of the logistics of picking up product. I mean... Uh, you told me a story about being in Colorado and, and being able to drive up to a dispensary and have them give you a significant amount of product. Certainly. Um, so are you, at, are you at risk? I mean, how should a politician feel if they're watching this uh, clip about Hero Grown and trying to understand all the good that you're doing for veterans? And what are some of the hassles that you run into or some of the, the, the liability that you could face because of these uh, restrictions in different territories? Well, we've been very fortunate. We've never had any incident with law enforcement, uh, you know, knock on wood. It helps that but, you're a former law enforcement. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know that that's, I think it helps, for example, in Colorado, where we were well established, where law enforcement knew what we were doing. They knew who we were. They knew we weren't taking, you know, product in Nebraska, where I grew up, or Kansas, or something like that, doing... You're you not know, trafficking maybe, cannabis. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, I think that, you know, and, and in, the, the, in Colorado, the process, or the, it's been legal for so long now, that, uh, for five years, that, um, you know, they're pretty much, you know, it's, it's just more open, for example, than it is in Nevada, where I live now. You know, in Nevada, you know, all of the owners, the licensees are very, very concerned about losing their license if they, you know, put fall out of compliance across. with the rules. Exactly. Right? You know, and, and some of the rules here are really idiotic. Uh, like most states, the rules were made by people who knew nothing about cannabis. Right. Um, so, you know, for example, we get a lot of donations from California, people that live in California. I don't ask them how it came, how the cannabis they donate got to Nevada. Um, but I'm sure that it didn't just appear in Nevada. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I mean, there, there are some times where, you know, we, we really do our best and I do my best not to, to do anything illegal. Um, but there are times, for example, when we're having giveaway events where certainly I'm in possession of more than what the legal limit is because I'm taking it to distribute to, right. you know, tens or hundreds of veterans 
Uh, and so I typically do that myself because I don't want to put someone else at risk. Right. Um, and again, we've never had an incident with law enforcement. Again, I, they know what we're doing with it. Uh, you know, I think here even by now. So let me go a different direction with this. You, uh, I had a dear friend uh, explain to me that he felt sincerely that California had sold its soul in the cannabis business because uh, his whole premise was uh, used to be patient focused. Uh, the, everything was about the, serving the patient. It's similar because what you're doing with veterans and, and uh, uh, first responders is about you know medicine for what ails you. Um, but the comment was made that California had sold its soul uh, from a regulatory perspective and from a commercial perspective because the patient was no longer the center of it. Well, and that, I think that's happened in every state, uh, you know, we're, certainly in states where they had medical first and then they transitioned into what they call recreational cannabis, which is one of the stupidest terms, too, that's, that has ever developed, like <laughs> recreational alcohol or something. It sounds like but, it's going to be an Olympic sport oh, yeah, at some exactly. point. Yeah. yeah. So um, the, in Colorado, we, we talk about when we talk about the regulators, we talk, they call it green crack. They're all about the green crack. That's all they care about. It's the money it generates, creates more jobs for their infrastructure that's that's forever growing, uh, where they can hire more people to do, supposedly do enforcement. You know, Colorado is a pretty good example of how silly it is. The marijuana enforcement division there, um, you know, their 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 business cards indicate that they are that they're investigators. You know, they carry guns the whole nine yards. But if you go in there and, and, and tell them you know about some illegal activity that's going on, they refer that to local law enforcement. They don't do investigations. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty stupid the way they, the whole system's set up. So the, the whole soul selling uh, subject, the reason why I bring it up is because um, there's redemption in life. I mean, I think everybody would agree there's, there's two sides to everything. So if we have collectively sold our souls and taken our fo focus off what's uh, good for the patient, uh, there's also an opportunity to perhaps buy our souls back. Right. Uh, what do you think about, um, and, and I think this is germane to what you're doing, because if patients that were terminally ill had access to cannabis at no charge, that would really go a long way to buy our souls back. Absolutely. And, and, and the same thing applies to veterans. I mean, Or, or if, really anyone if, that can't get exactly. what they need. You know, and, in, and Nevada is a really good example, too, of, of, of what can go, ba go really bad. You know, when, when Nevada first went recreationally legal, um, it really, it, it, the way they set the system up, it really shut out a lot of patients. And so there were patients who couldn't get medicine, okay, that had been getting medicine for quite some time, you know, prior to the recreational, uh, you know, going uh, legal. So, um, I mean, it, 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 they don't think about that. You know, the, the, the regulators don't think, again, they know nothing about and the, cannabis. And to the regulators' defense, they have the best intention. I mean, they're not out there trying to ruin somebody's process. They're trying to make rules about something that they may not, as you had uh, alluded to, they may not personally understand it at a level. I mean, if we had growers that were figuring out how to create regulations for growers, I think we'd have a lot better regulations because well, it's common sense. You know, and, and, and by and large, what you say is true. But on the other hand, I have to tell you that, you know, I'm pretty well convinced there are some states where... You know, the enforcement people sit around, a, you know, a round table every morning trying to figure out what they can do to, you know, to hassle the people that are in the industry, you know, which is pretty idiotic because, you know, it's almost like they're trying to, they don't understand that if they shut it down, they're going to lose their, they're going to eliminate their own jobs. So. Do you have access or has this been considered to for seized or forfeited uh, property? Can you get your hands on cannabis that's been seized by law enforcement you know, and redistribute it to? You know, that's something that, 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 we're, that we are getting ready to try to do. Before that, we tr for example, in Nevada, a lot of p tourists would buy cannabis and then they have to throw it away or give it away or whatever. It's a lot of times the rental car companies, a couple of years ago when it first went legal, were talking about they had all this stuff left in rental vehicles. You know, so I tried to get a way to <laughs> People didn't that. want to take it home with them. Well, yeah, exactly. They want to get caught because they didn't understand TSA is not a drug enforcement agency. Right. You know, I carry cannabis, my cannabis medicine in my carry-on every time I fly. I've had it in my carry-on and I open it up and TSA has gone through it and they've never touched my my cannabis at all. I'm sure if you had, you know, five pounds or something in your suitcase, they'd call the police or something, but that's not their job. They're looking for, for explosives. So, 
That's all they but care about. But the repurposing of, can, instead of destroying it, there's, there's got to be a, a value or an opportunity for us to take that cannabis that's for whatever reason been seized and to put it back to good use for the relief of uh, pain and trauma for veterans and first responders. Well, and, and that's absolutely true, you know, and that's something that really, you know, we probably need to work it hard just makes on too getting much sense. done. Well, that's, that's one yeah. reason, that's the main thing that holds it up. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's too logical, Drew. So the future for HeroGrown.org, uh, what's the future? What, what are your plans? Where are you going? Well, you know, again, we're, we're growing membership, you know, very, very rapidly. Uh, you know, and so our hope is just to continue what we're doing, but to touch more lives. You know, the last thing I think about every night before I fall asleep is, you know, 50 more veterans and first responders died today. And, you know, what could I have done to, you know, do a better job to, to save some of them? So, uh, you know, that that's the mission we're on now. You know, really, our, our, our goal is to to have veterans and, and pretty much everybody to have safe access to free cannabis the same way they have safe access to the drugs that are killing, you know, so many people. You know, we yeah. lose over 130 people a day now just to opiate overdose. So, I mean, it's just, it's a horrendous problem. Uh, you know, people have made, people and, and companies have made billions of dollars, you know, literally slaughtering Americans. Uh, you know, we'll lose more veterans just this year then we lo we've lost in combat and every war combined or every conflict combined since the end of the Vietnam War. Unbelievable. So a great cause, a great organization. Really appreciate what you do, how you do it. Um, you can join, become a supporter, become a part of this conversation by going to herogrown.org. And membership's free, by the way, for veterans and first responders. They can sign up online. So. Get involved and be at stake in the um, supporting our vets and first responders. Well, thanks, Drew. And again, we couldn't do what we do without you. So really appreciate you. Yeah. And, and Roger, Robert. appreciate you. you, man. All right, Keep thanks. it up. All Keep right. up the good work. We'll do it. Thanks. thanks.